Good morning and welcome to a look at Business Manager inside Facebook ads accounts and all that sort of stuff that's a complete and utter mystery. In fact, I reckon there's a whole lot of people who never even knew that they had anything to do with all this sort of stuff. They went one, woke up one day and went, what is this Facebook business manager? What is this ads account thing? I have no idea what any of this is. And look, if that's being you, you're definitely not alone. So what we're gonna do is take a quick look at what these things mean and what they are specifically to you and why they're actually so important to get right. First of all though, we're gonna uh, share the screen and get underway. <laughs> Funny, could just get um, Microsoft PowerPoint to not take over my entire laptop computer. Let's go, sharing screen. <laughs> We're getting there. Just got the one screen today, so things are a little bit wild west. So hang on there, buckle up tight, because we're going to go on a wild ride into the depths of Facebook that you didn't even know existed. This is a Facebook Business Manager ads account session. I'm going to do mostly a live demo inside the platform. So no death by PowerPoint today. I just have to start off with this because it is brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program in conjunction with Regional Development Australia in Brisbane and Treaty Business Consulting in the Northern Territory. What we're going to look at today is what Business Manager actually is, what it does, how to use it, what ads accounts are, how to use those ads accounts, and what I call really good business manager hygiene. There's a lot of people who've got some really messed up business accounts and need to sort of unravel them a bit. The good news is you can do that. Sometimes so, if you've had somebody who was uh, a previous employee or maybe a previous agency that didn't quite know what they were doing with Business Manager, it might take a bit more unraveling, but hopefully we won't get into that too much. You can watch this again later on YouTube. We are recording it this morning. If you've got questions though, whack them in the questions. It should flash up on my screen. Even though I've only got the one to work with, I should be able to see what's going on with it. And if you wanna watch this on YouTube later on, either search Business Station, or you can search my name as well, Dante St. James. A little bit later tonight, I'll be loading that up to my particular YouTube channel as well. A little bit about me so you know where I'm coming from as I'm an ASBAS Digital Solutions Advisor, which is why I'm on this call right now. Um, a NICE Program Mentor for the New Enterprise Incentive Scheme with the Australian Government's um, Jobs and Training and Education Department. And also with Facebook Australia and New Zealand, they've got me as a community trainer and a digital marketing associate. I've also worked in Google's Digital Springboard Program. And um, I've done a fun fact, I've voiced over 17 books that have been written by other people in audiobook form. So it's one of those things you get to do when you have this wild, crazy life that I do as something of a digital nomad. So what we're gonna do is pop out of the screen share, pop into a new screen share. It's gonna make sure I bring up the right version of Chrome. So I'm showing you the right accounts. Let's see how we're going. Right, share screen again. We're going to be doing a lot of this in and out of sharing screens. Here we go. We're, we're live and we're happening. Um, don't forget, use the chat window, use the q and I will see them as they pop up and I'll hopefully be able to answer those questions as we're going on. Now, the first thing you do for accessing anything to do with your business stuff on Facebook is instead of going to facebook.com and sort of navigating through your ads and all that, I like to go to business.facebook.com. What this takes me into is directly into my business manager. So if you've got a page, you've got a business manager. You don't have to have done any ads or any boosts or anything like that. As long as you've got a page, you have got one of these bad boys. Now, I've got lots of them, and there's more of them in my other Facebook account, so I've got a couple of them. Slight terms of service violation there, maybe, maybe not. I've got a lot, a lot of ad accounts that I'm part of and a lot of business managers that I've been added to. Now, how this all works is that you've only got the ability to create two of these. So you've got to create um, one and then you can create a second one. So you notice how I can't create any more. I've already reached my limit. So I've created the two of them. I can't create any more. But if I need to create another business account that I know because I'm no longer using one of them, I can actually delete an existing business account or someone else can create a business account for me. So that usually happens in the case where I'm working with clients, for instance. So they have already created their business manager account. So then they can add me as an authority onto that. So I've got one here from Andrew, Arafira Solar, Aussie Pooch, Nutrition, Clear Reception are all you know companies that I work with, but they're not mine. My ones are these ones, Clickstarter. And one other one for me would be can't even see the other one. Where is it? Oh, Skull International Darwin. That's my other business manager that I actually have myself. All the others are ones that I've been added to by clients or other businesses or agencies that I've done some work with. So they've wanted me to pop in and be able to control that kind of stuff. 
So that's what you get when you can't really create another one. You get a personal one, you get a business one. So I've got the Clickstarter one, which is my business one. And then I've got the Skull International one, which is my other business one that I created. All the rest of these I've been added to over time. Now, the beautiful thing is you can see that you can have multiple pages inside there as well as multiple ads accounts. So under Clickstarter, for instance, that's my agency account. That's what I use. It's got me attached to two particular pages, one person, which is me as the person acting on it, but it's given me access to seven individual ad accounts. Think of ad accounts as the payment accounts. They're the accounts that will pay for those ads. They're also the thing that gets banned the most when you do naughty things or it, it, the algorithm somehow thinks you've done some naughty things as well. But if you think of these, like this briefcase here, if you think of a briefcase is holding certain things in it and your each business manager is a briefcase and inside your briefcase, in case this one, is seven ad accounts and two pages and one person who has access to all those things. In the case of NC Electrical here, in their briefcase, there's one ad account, one page, and one person who's got access to that specific one. But if we go up to Clear Reception, his briefcase has one ad account, one page, and two people who have access to it. So you can have lots of different variations, like Arafira Solar, for instance, has three people who have access to it, but only two pages are associated with it, but one ad account. So that means that they're only using one method of payment here for both of those pages, whether the ads are coming from one page or the other page, Arafira Solo or Arafira Electrical. And then you've got three different people, myself, the client himself, and another colleague that I work with at Treaty Business Consulting who has then access to that account as well. Does that make sense so far? Because once you start to get deeper into this, when you go into a specific ad account, that's when you start to see a lot more detail in terms of what people have access to, how to add access to people, how to add different pages in there as well so that you can add specific assets in here. So let's just say for an example, you are a business who has just taken on a new social media manager and they want to say, give me admin access to your website, to your, to your Facebook, to your Facebook page. You actually don't want to do that. You don't want to give them admin access. And the reason is why, right? Because when you gave someone admin access, if someone hacks their account, it's really super simple for that hacker to go in create themselves as an admin on that account and then kick you and the agency both out so you've lost access to your page. I have lost complete track of the amount of people who've done that. Um, Hush is just asking if I can show how you get into the business account page again. So it's usually just business.facebook.com. So if you've got an, a business account, this is where you'll go. So business.facebook.com. In my case, I have all these businesses that I've got listed under there. You may have one, if you do not have a business manager account, then that's you can create a business under there. So if you ever want to know, sorry, I just got something going wrong with me here. Uh, thank you. Yep, thanks. No worries. So the um, so the, the business manager accounts, yeah, they're suitcases. So briefcases holding stuff in them. Again, ad accounts, pages, and people. I'm going to go into this particular one because this is the ad account, the, the sorry, business manager I want to work with. Because in this one, it's got a list of a, a list of some of the clients that I'm been working with. Say, for instance, Raw Bean Espresso, Clickstarter, Tourism Top End, those different people who I've been doing some work with over the last couple of years. I've also been given access through to these two pages for that particular work as well. So what they've done is instead of adding me as an admin to the page, they've added my business manager as an owner of that page. So if we go to, for instance, I'm gonna to go to the Australian Industry and Events Network. When my internet decides to pick itself up and dust itself off and give me a little bit more to work with. Here we go. Australian Industry and Defence Network. So I pop in here. So once I'm in here, if I want to go and look at what the settings of the page are, who owns it, the page roles, it will tell me then that there's a person here, that page owner is Clickstarter and me. Now these guys want to take over the ownership of that page. So someone's put that out there. Um, I don't know when they did it, but they want to re they want to own that page for themselves. So I can actually do that. I can respond to the request and then send that through. Now, what I want to do at first though, I want to make sure that that is a legitimate request. So I will get in touch with the person to say, hey, 
just checking, did you send out a request on Facebook to take ownership of the Aiden NT page over? And I'll go, yep, that's right. I did do that. And I go, great. Okay, I'm going to approve that for you now. So it gives us a chance to make sure that nobody's trying to come in there as a, you know, as a bad person, a bad actor trying to take over an account. This is what happens when somebody has actually requested ownership in the correct way. So for instance, they've gone through their business manager and they've requested their business manager to take over ownership of a specific asset that they have access to as an admin. So what I would be asking is this guy here, Jack, I'll be asking him if he's the person who initiated that. If he is the person who initiated it, then that's great. That means that he's the person who is initiating this. So I'd need to check with him first, say, hey, Jack, did you initiate a change of ownership request for Aiden NT's Facebook page? He'll say, oh, no, it wasn't me. I'll cancel that and I'll, and I'll there you go, I'll reject it. So I don't transfer the ownership of the page. Because he's um, done it as a specific business name, that to me is probably going to be legitimate. And I know Jack, he's my housemate. So the chances are that it was definitely him. He just didn't mention it to me because he's a bit young and forgetful. So in that case, I go, that's how I'm going to operate their particular page. I'm currently the owner, as it says over here, I have ownership of that page. I also have ownership of this other page here, the click starter page. So if I go there, you'd think that the Clickstarter business manager would have ownership of the Clickstarter page, but you'd be surprised sometimes it's not the case. If I go in now to my settings and to my page roles, and then I'll see that, yep, Clickstarter is the page owner in conjunction with my, administra my, my business manager. So there's co-owners of that. So I can do everything I need to do in there. Jack is no longer no longer part of the business, so he doesn't need to be there. So I can boot him out. Although the reality is I may, as a VA, employ him again. So I might just leave him in there for now because he's a trusted friend. So you can see how that lines up. So with the pages that your business account is, is, is associated with, gives you admin access and ownership of that. So instead of, say for instance, going into that page and assigning a new page role from here, what you do is you request it from here. So I can see what those particular things are that I've got ownership over, as opposed to just having admin access to. When you've got ownership over it, you've got overriding ownership and you can't be removed from it. Even if somebody hacked into Jack's account, they can't remove ownership of that because I've got that in place. They can only remove admins. So if I can, so I can go in there as an owner, I can kick the bad person back out and then they, I, I can still get in there and then access it to add the admin. So I want to add, excuse me, bless me. So once you've got that sorted and understanding that accessing as an owner is very different from accessing as an admin, and it's also way safer. It's a way of protecting yourself from having your Facebook page being hijacked by people who are not you. And there's literally tens of thousands of people in the last two years have had their Facebook pages hacked by other people because they haven't set up this particular page ownership method. And I know it's not really widely advertised by anybody that this is the way you do it, but it is by far the safest way to secure your page. So that first lesson number one is go in as an owner to a page, not as a not as an admin to a page. Be an admin as well, but being an owner means that you have access to that. Now, how do you add access to that? In my business here, I can then add certain access to things. So I can go in my business settings. I go into pages under accounts, and this will show me again those two pages or three pages that I've got. Now, I've requested um, some ownership of this one. I no longer need that because I've actually... Um, it was because that person had lost account, access to their ads account and they needed me to help them out. So that's now out. I can now add a new page here. So if you've got a business or you've got a digital marketing business or you've got just you know a business where you've got multiple pages, this is where you'll make sure you secure ownership of those pages. So by doing that, under your business settings with the business, my one is Clickstarter, I can add different pages to it. So I can go add, I can request access to a page or I can add a page that I already you know, that my business already owns. But what I'm gonna do is request access to a page. So one that I know that I've definitely got control of. So I'm gonna look for, um, let's just say, one that I definitely know I've got access to is, 
Um, Darwin websites. So it's not going to find that one because it's looking for a primary. So I've completely clicked the wrong thing. Sorry, I've completely messed you up. I can create a new page from in here. So this is actually the better way to create a new page for your business is through your business manager rather than through um, Pages app or anything like that. Or I can add a page that I think I already know. So I'm going to look for um, Darwin Small Business Network. That's one I definitely own. What it's going to now do, I'm going to add this in. I already own that page. I already am an admin of that page. And it says, as I'm already an admin on this page, I've been automatically approved. So for your case where you've got an administration access to a page, it's really good for you to add it in as an owner here. So I can go in there and now add all my other pages that I've got as uh, that I have admin access to. So if you've already got admin access, this is what you need to do on top of it to make sure your page is then completely owned by you and then a hacker can't get in as an admin and kick you out. They can kick you out as an admin, but they can't kick you out as an owner. And as an owner, you can kick them out and take control of your page all over again. So I'll go again, look at the list of the pages that I know, which is Skull International Darwin, uh, Darwin Digital Marketing. That's one I definitely know I own. Again, it's gonna tell me that as I'm an admin of that page, I've been automatically approved to take ownership of that page. Again, I'm going to add another one because I've got quite a few of them. So what it's done is also things that I follow. So I can request ownership of these pages as well, even though they're not mine. They'll just re they'll just reject it. They'll get that request and they'll go, who the hell are you, Dante? Stop it. This one, I definitely own. So I'm going to add that one as I'm an admin to that. I now own it. Now, actually, that one is actually owned by someone else. So this is an example one I don't own. So it's owned by F Up Knights, and they need to approve the request. So what I'm going to do is actually cancel that because I don't want to take ownership of that because the actual head, I own a franchise for that here in Darwin. Um, they own the overall thing, so they, they get to own that one. So I've canceled that one. That's an example of when I'm trying to take ownership of something that I'm just an editor for and not an admin of. So I look for other things that I might have access to. So for instance, this page, I've actually got um, access to it as an admin, but I'm not the owner of it. They are the own owner of it. So that should do me now for adding pages in. So I've got ownership of those pages. Again, the reason why you'll do this is because it's, it's just security. It gives you the option to be able to um, if someone takes over access to your Facebook uh, profile to get into your pages and kick you out, this gives you the option to get back out again. Now, it's not going to help you too much if you, if you don't have um, access to your Facebook account, the, the profile side of it. But if someone else who's an admin, so you can you can take care of and take complete responsibility of your own cyber security and make sure that people can't get in because you've got a really good password and a really good two-factor authentication. It makes you go through you know a second factor on your phone to prove that it's you when you're logging in from a new device. But it doesn't mean that everyone's doing that. In fact, it's quite notorious that other people who are admins on your pages have not gone to the same kind of trouble of cyber security and securing their account as what you have. So they become a very nasty way for people to backdoor themselves into your Facebook page and kick you all out as admins. As the owner, you don't get kicked out because they got kick out you as an admin, but they don't kick out you as an owner. You as an owner can go in through here and boot them out so that they're no longer a part of it. So that's the start of it with adding pages and securing pages. If we go back out to our business settings. So I'm gonna go back out to business.facebook.com. And I can go into any one of these other accounts. So for instance, under this Skull International one, they currently have ownership of a few of my pages that I don't really want them to have ownership of. So they've got ownership of this Dante St. James ad account, which should not be living under there. So in that case, I can go into, okay, I go into my business settings. And in my business settings, I'm gonna now look at my ad accounts. So ad accounts. And what I can see that in here, 
is that this Dante St. James ad account has been associated with Skull International Darwin. So what that means is that when I'm running things under this particular ad account, it's saying that it's part of the Skull International Darwin, um, Skull International Darwin uh, business. So that's not to say how I want to do it. I've been involved in that particular organization for many, many years, so I don't really mind that it shows us under that. But if at some stage I don't, I'm not really working with them anymore, then I would need to deactivate this out of here. So deactivate it or remove access from it. So for instance, go here, edit it, change my payment method, which I've got a payment method in there, or I can then just completely deactivate that ad account and then there will be no ad account currently active under that particular business. Now that ad account I can access into other th areas as well. So notice there's this one called um, the ID of that. So I'm just gonna copy that ID and I'm gonna go over to another business. So notably the Clickstarter one right here. So the things that I'm running under here, I also wanna run with my particular ad account. So under the people, I've got myself, which is correct. I wanna look at my ad accounts under that business, and it's gonna show me what ad accounts are currently active in there. So there's one called Clickstarter, one called NC Electrical. All these ad accounts are used to pay for different things that this particular business has access to. What I wanna do is add a new ad account. So I'm gonna request access to one. Hasn't found that one, so just add an ad account. Sorry, wrong one, ad account ID. Now I own this, it's been added to another business. I can request permission to work with that as well. So with that, I'm gonna go add it. And it's not even giving me the option to do it. So once I've added a business manager, I can't remove it. So what it's been done, it's been added to this particular one here. This is where we kind of get really messy with these. It's been added to this one. I would actually have to remove that ads account from this particular business manager in order to associate with another account. For now though, it's not bothering me because I'm still involved in that organization and it's not going to be a problem moving forward. But I may wanna consider in the future that I want to um, use that on some other account. Now I don't have to, I can set up another ad account. So over under that Clickstarter business. There's a lot of complexity in here, isn't there? Under here, I can then add another ad account that uses the same payment details. So I might have got the Clickstart ad account that's using a certain set of payment details. So I can go in there and look at a bit more of it. It's using that same credit card number as I had with the other one. That's fine. So I don't necessarily need to create another ad account unless I want to spread the payments out. Say for instance, I wanted to make sure that if I added a new page, so a page that this has access to for the Darwin Small Business Network, I can add an ad account that's used specifically to pay for that. If I wanted in my accounting to get clean invoices coming in that said, say for instance, I wanna know when I get my, my invoice in from Facebook for the payments I've made for ads, it's gonna say, okay, it's currently putting it all under this Clickstarter banner. So it doesn't matter which ad account I'm using, it's just saying it's all under Clickstarter, whether it's for any one of these four entities here. When I do ad accounts, what it's now done is said, okay, for the rugby shop, it's going to be a certain amount. For Solar City NT, it'll be it'll be marked as Solar City NT. For Clickstarter, it'll be Clickstarter. What I want to do is make sure that when I look at these pages, if I run anything under Australian Industry and Defence Network, it gets billed as Australian Industry and Defence Network, not as Clickstarter. So that then I can then on charge that cost to that particular client. So what I would need to do to do that is make sure that there is an ad account that matches Australian Industry and Defence Network. So I can pop down in my ad accounts, add a new ad account, create a new one. And I can call this one Australian Industry and Defence Network. Set my, now this is really important for you to do to make sure you're in the right currency. You definitely want to set your right time zone because setting your right time zone in the case of Darwin for me means that the times that you set things to start and finish in boosts, in uh, anything in the ads platform will be correct as of your time zone. If you had, a, if I had to set that to Broken Hill, which is actually Australian Eastern Daylight Time, 
then that's no good to me. That's going to set me to a time that's no great. That's not going to work. That's going to be, everything's going to be an hour out. So Broken Hill time there is actually equivalent of what Adelaide time is right here, right now at the moment. So I want it to be Darwin because that's where I work. That's where most of my clients are. And making sure that I've definitely got the Australian dollar set because it means that everything will be calculated the right way. Now, where you select your currency also selects your location. So you know if you've ever been into the ads manager and you tried to set up an ad, um, an ad and it's telling you about 25 miles and 50 miles around a radius of an area that you want to advertise to, that's because your currency was probably set initially to US dollars. Now, once you change that later on, it's too late to set that that sort of that that the non-metric nature of your measurements is sort of set in place. That's that can't be changed later on. You'd have to shut down an ad account, set up a new one, and set it up as Australian dollar and an Australian time zone to get Australian measurements. So thankfully, in this particular one, I get forty kilometers, eighty kilometers instead of twenty-five miles and fifty miles, for instance. I'll cancel this one out so we don't need to go forward with the whole thing, but you get the idea. Now, what I want to do is I don't want Clickstarter to have any sort of control over this particular business here because I'm not doing anything with them. So I'm going to deactivate that one. I don't need that ads account because they've got their own ads account and I no longer work with them. So that removes that from that list. This is where we get into the whole idea of business manager hygiene. It's cleaning up your accounts when you got there. So it's going to be deactivated soon. They're just going to make sure there's no outstanding balances, which is not. So that will, over the next hour or two, then disappear from my list. I still do work for this because it's my business. I still do work for these guys. I do work for these guys occasionally. And then I do work for these and for these. So I'm going to leave them in place because at any time I might need those again. I can then go into what the Instagram accounts are that are linked. Now, this is quite often a problem that people will get when they're trying to connect their page with their Instagram page in through their, their, their Facebook page. So they go to the Facebook page, want to link their Instagram account and it says, oh, another business already owns it. That's because in here, in business settings, is where the business has been allocated as owning it. Say, for instance, it might say that, you know, for NC Electrical and Air Conditioning, Solar City NT, currently is connected to that particular Instagram account. So I can go in and look at what these different things are that are attached. So Instagram accounts, it's showing me that for the Clickstarter business, the Clickstarter Instagram account is connected. So I'm going, that's fine. That's exactly what I want. What that means is that I can then, on my business account on Instagram for Clickstarter, initiate something which will then post directly into my Facebook account for Clickstarter. It also means that then they're connected in the ads accounts so that I can, for instance, send out ads that refer on Facebook to Clickstarter, the Facebook page, and on Instagram to Clickstarter, the Instagram account. So there's no confusion there. They're all going to match. They're all going to be there, and they're all going to be automatically synced to each other if need be. Where the problem comes is, of course, if this Instagram account is attached to one of my other businesses, say, for instance, my personal ads account here, which I've got a lot of business assets in. So in this particular account, if I go in, I've got lots of different businesses, lots of different pages that are associated and lots of different ads that have run in the past. So if I've got one of these, so for instance, go into my settings again, and it will show me that I've got certain Instagram accounts that are attached. So at the moment I've got none, but say for instance, I had one in here, I was trying to connect my click, my Clickstarter business and my Clickstarter Facebook page to my Clickstarter Instagram account. It's saying you've already got it connected somewhere else. It may have been that I had it connected in here. So if that's the case, I need to remove it from in here so it can be cleared up in time to be able to connect them through the other business, which is back up to Clickstarter again. And then I can connect it through then and I can request access to that. So under Instagram accounts, I can then add and then I can connect my Instagram account through an authorization process. You might have to do a second factor authentication, like whether you've used um, you know, uh, an, an email or an SMS to be sent through to you to do that. I'll tell you now though, email is probably the least secure way of doing this. Um, when people have their ads accounts and their 
pages and their Facebook profiles hacked, it's usually via their email. It's usually via something like Gmail or Hotmail where they've not secured or changed that particular um, address in many, many years. They've just been running the same username and password combination for years and years and years, and it's caused them a whole lot of strife. So you want to make sure that you're able to put yourself in a position where this doesn't happen to you. So making sure that whatever email address is associated with your Facebook account has got a really strong password that can't be just guessed based on looking around your desk and going, okay, plant one, two, three, because I've got a plant here in front of me, or, you know, key person of influence one, two, three, because that's the name of the book that I can see on my desk, or name of child, please do not use your name of your children in your passwords, or the name of the dog, or your grandmother, or your favorite auntie, anything that can be found out through just a little bit of a search on social media as to part of what your password is, that's the stuff you don't use. That's usually the case is, that people have got through um, through unsecured email accounts where they are then actually able to then go and initiate a change of password to kick you out of your Facebook account. So please, even if you do all these secured things in Business Manager and through your ads account, this is gonna be the place where you don't really wanna have um, someone getting into your core Facebook profile because once they get in, you're going to be screwed. You can't take it back. It's going to be almost impossible to get it back because you can't verify anything because they've taken over your email as well and they can see it. So please secure your email. It'll make it so much easier for your life. In the case of all these other things, things like brand safety integrations, brand safety has got to do with, um, for instance, if you're running a, a Facebook ads account that contains something for baby wear, and there's certain kinds of websites and apps that are used in what's called Facebook's audience network, which is a whole bunch of external sites and apps that um, are not part of Facebook, but they they take their ads. Uh, and you don't want your particular um, your particular um, your 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 ads appearing on those particular sites. So, for instance, if it was like um, you know a, quite a violent game, you didn't want your kid friendly stuff appearing in ads there because you don't want it. You can actually put in domains that your ads are not to appear on and also block lists, where you block particular lists of um, destinations, apps, websites, that you do never want your ads ever appearing on. With your payment methods, this is payment methods that sit as like a default over all the businesses that may, all the, all the pages and all the ads accounts that may sit under here. So I've got a couple in here. Um, that one is actually dead, so I can get rid of that one. But it's um, one of those things where you can go, I'm going to have, this is going to be my backup payment, even though that's the same payment that exists elsewhere on my, um, on, on my ads account. So I can associate a payment method with a business, but I can also associate a payment method with a specific ad account. What it will do, it will default to what the payment method is in here. So the payment method for SolarCity NT its particular payment method that is associated with its particular ads account will be the default that it pays from. So that particular credit card, that's gonna pay it all the time. But if that credit card doesn't work, then it's gonna default back to my payment method here and attempt to take it from there. So that's just where it's really worth knowing that if you want to have a backup payment in it, you can have an overall payment method that goes in here, but your default for each one of these particular ads accounts is gonna be paid for buy the credit card that's under that particular ad account. So that's where it'll go first. And if it doesn't work, it'll go to the other one. But it should actually let you know that it's gonna do that. If you wanna do a quick check on the kind of stuff where like requests that people have had for access to things, you can go to requests here. And in here, it's gonna say, okay, here's the request that I've either received from others for they want access to ad accounts so they wanna be able to, by some, for instance, hire the social media manager. I would see a request in here for them to have access to this business manager and to operate as me. Also, it'll see the things I've sent out and any invitations I've had. So if there's been an invitation where um, people in my business or myself have invited other people to come in and manage this business, this is where that'll live as well. Once you have all this explained, you sort of start to get an idea of what all these things are. So for instance, starting from the top, in my Clickstarter business, these are the people who have access to it, just me. I'm the only person who needs access to it right now. I can have partners. So for instance, I can partner with 
um, Neil's business manager so that I can then do things on his account. I can then also add a new partner. I can give a partner access to my stuff. Or in the case of Neil, I asked him to share his assets. So everything under his business manager account, I'm able to get hold of. If, for, if I was operating this as an agency at the time, I'm just not quite doing that right now. I've got another account that I do all that in. Uh, in this particular one, if I was operating as an agency or operating as um, multiple businesses under one banner, this is where I'd request to get the access to everything under another ads account. So say for instance that you have um, bought a new business from someone else and they've got their own Facebook page, ads accounts and all that. This is where you'll do it. You'll ask them as a partner to share their assets and they'll come in here where you can take them on or they can then add you. So give a partner access to your assets. They can add you as a partner to their particular assets and then they can kick themselves out and then you have the option to take over as the controlling or the owning partner of that. As we work down our pages, these are the pages that are associated with this particular business. It's very different if I pop into Dom's, his pages that are associated with there are just his page. That one there, Dom's Bar and Lounge. And his Instagram account right here is connected through correctly. So that's the right one that's gonna be there. Popping back to my account. Your ad accounts have already been through. You can have many ad accounts, many pages if you want to. Your business asset groups are a way of grouping those things together. So for instance, if Tourism Top End wanted to give me access to an ad account, pages, and a partnership all in one thing, then they bundle it together by adding me so they can then separate your lines of business. So for instance, Clickstarter might have a training line of business that has three different pages associated with it and three different ad accounts. It might also have a social media management part of its business that has two pages and two ad accounts. I can separate these into either brands that I quite often would do that in my other account I do, different regions. Say for instance, if you've got um, business pages for, if you've got a jewelry store and you've got them in three different states, you can separate them into regions or states or cities, anything like that, or countries. Or you can separate them into an agency. So you can manage your pages, your ad accounts, or any of those sort of assets that come under it on behalf of other businesses as an agency. So this would be where, for instance, the business asset will be an agency asset. So you're the agency for a particular business that's working with you. So that's something which is very useful if you're going to be a social media manager to sort everything else as an agency. It will separate your stuff from, from, from being confused with your client stuff. And that means that when you go into the ads manager, you're not gonna get this big whole mess of, and I'll show you what I mean by talking about, ads manager, where I go into this particular ads manager has mixed up all these different kinds of things for, I've got this for um, a coffee place, uh, another coffee place there. If I go further down the list, I start to get beyond the coffee places and I go into others. So kill that off. I'm in someone else's ad account, Clickstarter, here we go. Where I'm running stuff that's not just for Clickstarter itself, but I'm saying things for other other people, like Dubbo Workshop Bookings wasn't for me. Tropical Light was actually for um, Tourism Top End. Aiden NT, which is that Australian Industry Defence Network we saw before, where I've got things all sort of sitting in this one account. I don't want that in the future. I just want Clickstarter stuff sitting in here. So that's where you would separate that out, is in your business settings and in the business asset groups. So it's starting to make sense now. Everything's like, you know, filing cabinets. Things are filed in different ways to make your whole job easier. The average small business is not gonna need to go into this much complexity. If you own a series of um, shops all around the country or if you're a digital marketing agency or wanting to become one, this stuff will become very, very clear to you and very, very important to you. Apps will be the different apps you have, like real live apps, for instance, that you've connected through to Facebook. So apps on Facebook are things like games that run through Facebook, um, particular business tools that you may have that are running through Facebook, through the Facebook platform. Um, back when we used to all play Farmville and things like that, this is where, for instance, if you were the owner of Farmville, you would have had an app that lived in here called Farmville. Your Instagram accounts are the Instagram accounts that are connected to you. You can assign partners in here. You can add other Instagram accounts if you need to. For now though, I've just got this one. 
Your lines of business is just another category that you're gonna make, much like your business asset groups. It's where you wanna go, I'm separating things from Clickstarter training to Clickstarter social media, Clickstarter SEO and Clickstarter websites. There's different lines of business. For you, it could be um, my cafe number one is separated from my takeaway food outlet number two, which is separated from my shoe shop is number three and my um, my apparel shop, which is shop is, is number four. So in those cases, you're separating those different lines of business. So you don't get blurred lines and get your ads manager showing like one feed that's got every single ad for every different company you've got you want to separate those out so that you've got the invoicing going to the right entity this is this is really not going to be that many of you it's going to be people who have got this set up in like lots of different lines of business and lots of different businesses that they separate out from each other then your data sources are things like your pixels now, pixels are that piece of code that sits on your website that allows you to do things like measure what the reaction has been of things that have been happening between your Facebook ads and your and your page on your website. So, for instance, if you wanted to retarget people who'd visited a particular product page on your website with a new ad on the Facebook platform, you can do that through your pixels. When you create your pixels through here, it's always under a specific business. So if I wanted to create a pixel for my particular Clickstarter business, I would do it from here, and I have actually done it from here. Go into my pixels. I've got a pixel for a particular campaign I ran for Tourism Top End. I've got one for me, which is for my web, for um, certain things I'll do within it. I've got the Clickstarter website one that I've actually got a pixel created for that. For two other things and Tourism Top End's pixel, which I asked for access to, but they never gave it to me. So that one's never really you know gone through. If I accept this uh, terms of service, it might actually allow it. There you go, I've now got access to it. So I can then read um, what the retargeting things is of them. So that's got a request pending. I probably need to cancel that because honestly, I don't really need access to that right now. And brand safety is all about um, what you were doing with those ads before we did cover that one. Registrations is like news pages. So this is, this is gonna be um, much about your... Um, if you're trying to get around that Facebook news sharing ban, now that's all being sort of rolled back again, but this is where you would actually go about it. So you select particular pages that you would register as being news pages to be paid through. So for instance, in the government are setting up that whole situation where they um, are making it so that news outlets and news uh, pages will actually be paid for um, their stuff being shared on the Facebook platform and on Google as well. This is where you set that up. So you set up a page, you go, this is a news page, therefore it becomes part of the monetization for it. So it goes in there, you register yourself as a news provider, and then you become part of that payout thing. Now you have to go through eligibility criteria. Not everyone with a blog is a news media outlet. You will know if this counts for you because you're a radio station and TV station, uh, a newspaper or an online news service, then this will be you. And we already covered our security center is really good for doing a checkup. So you can set up um, who is set up to do, say, two-factor authentication, who you want to act add as business admins. Now, I've just got myself in there. If I was um, wanting to, when I've got a new business partner come in, I'll add them as an admin so that there's a backup. If I ever get hit by a bus, someone else has got access in and they can help handle the clients the way they need to be. This one's good. I need to set this up. So I'm going to set up, right? two-factor authentication for me that's going to be connected through to my phone account flash up on my app on my phone and say is this you trying to log in i'll go yes it is this is a great way to secure it so i'm actually going to put that in as a change that i want for me for certain facebook products you can be verified as a business so for instance um, that would be some stuff in like um uh, commerce manager, the commerce manager is where you're starting to sell things online through a Facebook or Instagram shop that would require a certain level of business verification. Now that doesn't mean you get a blue tick, the blue tick that you get like on Instagram is being verified. That's a whole different process, not related to this. This is just verifying that you are a particular business that is trusted to be able to operate and come in commercial ways on the Facebook platform. So I don't need to do that because I don't have those certain Facebook products. So it hasn't prompted me to actually do that. So when you go into business.facebook.com, not everyone's going to end up with the list of their business account stuff. But if you do, and most people actually do, and they end up with, um, well, let's go back out there, business.facebook.com, they end up with that list. There's another place where you're going to have 
access to what is called Business Suite. Now, if you haven't looked at Business Suite yet, this is a much neater, tidier way of doing things like posting to your pages and seeing how your pages are performing. So when you go in your Business Manager, pop under this little hamburger menu there. See, it looks like a little hamburger. And I'll pop down to Business Suite. So I'll go and say, um, down, 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 down. Where are we? Oh, excuse me, I've just got like a really, really blocked nose at the moment. Is it business settings? Somewhere in here. Where am I missing it? Was well, here. Actually, I've got confused. It's facebook.com forward slash business. Sorry about that. So there's business.facebook.com and then there's facebook.com forward slash business, which is like your hub of everything to do with business on Facebook. So this is where you can learn a whole lot more stuff. So you can get insights. Now in the insights, this is where you can learn more about um, you know, how to advertise and the sort of um, information you might need to do some research on advertising. But one of the things I really like from in here is my insights tools and then up here to audience insights. Audience insights for Facebook business people is going to allow you, I'll go to, click to go to audience insights, opens up an interface that allows me to do a bit of market research on Facebook. So for instance, if I go to everyone on Facebook within the United States, I want Australia. Come on, spell. Kick out the United States, I don't want to deal with them. And it gives me a rundown of the kind of people that are on the Facebook platform within Australia. So that's instead of business.facebook.com, it's facebook.com forward slash business. And then you look for the insights through there. So in here, it gives me an idea that there's 53% of Facebookers in Australia are women, 47% men. I can then start to break that down in terms of what their interests are. So if they say their interests are sneakers, trainers, footwear, yep, that's what I'm looking for. It tells me that it's still women by, by far who have an interest in sneakers rather than men. That surprises me. It tells me that nearly half of them are married. A lot of them have done university education. So that's really interesting as well. Highly educated women who are m almost mostly married or at least in a relationship. And they have other kinds of things they do. So for the areas they work in and the pages that they tend to like overall. So people who are in, say, furniture shops, they like Matt Blatt and Warehouse Furniture Clearance. Products, home decor, it gives you an idea of what are the things that people actually like in here. So once you get into this business manager stuff, you start to see a whole world of information and stats open up to you. So your audience insights, you can go down much, much deeper. You can look at women, or men, so let's just say uh, men between 22 and 40, and we see different results come up. So boutique bronze snake shop, video games, COD, of course, PlayStation Australia, of course, shoes of vans, um, health and beauties for links, of course, <laughs> UFC and AFL, no surprises here on what 22 to 40 year old men in Australia are all about who have an interest in trainers or sneakers, right? If I take the sneakers out, that's going to change again. Suddenly, Carlton Dry is a very big thing for them. Still Call of Duty. Call of Duty's all over. But of course, you know, Russell Coit Appreciation Society. Down as a monarch. <laughs> I don't know if Russell Coit is a king of Australia, but hey, that might be something. Uh, UFC and AFL still massively popular in that demographic. So you can play around with all that within your Facebook business manager, as well as going into your ads manager, your settings of your business to go and really tighten that up, the access to it. Your audiences here is where you can actually build audiences. So I'm gonna pop in there. It gives you another area into Audience Insights where you can see the audiences you've already built. So here's a bunch of them I've already built for previous campaigns, or I can create a new one. And these audiences are a way for you to create things based off actions on your website or on the people who've watched videos of yours. You can create lookalike audiences. It's just like in your ads account, but you're creating the audiences over here where you've got a bit more room and a bit more time to do that without being rushed through the process of making an ad. Back over here, events managers to do with your pixels. Experiments are something if you really want to get technical and you're someone who's very, very curious and probably has a lot of money to spend as well, that might be where you'll do that. 
Account quality is something I want to um, let you know about because it's something which a lot of people don't ever have a look at because it doesn't tell them. Um, it tells you whether you're a naughty boy and, or a good boy or a naughty girl and a good girl when it comes to Facebook. So the Skull International Darwin business, that doesn't have any ad rejections in the last 30 days. So it's in a good status with them. There's nothing in here that's saying that there's any problems, no data source issues with anything account associated with it. We can look at the account status overview, which tells us that this particular account that's been associated with me in the past has been restricted, but I've had no issues over all these other ones. They're all looking great, looking in good stead, but these guys seem to have had their account restricted. So what I might wanna do is disassociate myself from this particular account. So if I look at that, and I go, well, I don't really wanna have this on there. I wanna get rid of it. I can go into that particular account and get rid of it. So go to the business home of this particular one. And for the sake of my overall account, I don't wanna be associated with it. I wanna remove myself from it. So to do that, it's probably not gonna let me now because um, I'm locked into it because it's been uh, banned from running ads. But let me have a look. They often get banned, these guys, because the poor things they get associated with trying to sell animals and they don't, they sell food for animals. They often get associated with animals. So in here, in that page, I've got access to it. I wanna remove myself from it. So I wanna go there, remove. So it won't let me remove it because it's a restricted account. But what I can do is turn off any of the things I want. I don't wanna to publish to it. And it's not even gonna let me do that because it's, it's, a, it's a banned ad account. So I'm sort of stuck with it. So if I wanted to change my ad account quality, um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm stuck with one banned ad account in there, which hopefully isn't going to override any of the other things I've got in the rest of my account. If you look at clear reception, he's been good, his ads are fine, no ads rejected, no data source issues. And if I look at the account status overview, I can see that, yep, I'm okay, but this one business account that I've got access to isn't okay, but everyone else is, they're all good. This is where you'll be able to look at what your standing is with Facebook, where your overall feeling. If you're seeing too many red things, especially in the account issues, then you're gonna have issues. So this one here is leading me to look through it. So look at my outstanding issues and my resolved issues. So this is where you'll see things like, for instance, when you have an ad account ban, this is where you'll go and manage it from. So that is really a bit of a walk through how these particular things work. So if you've got your ads account, you can have many ads accounts and many pages associated with each business manager, but you can only have two business managers that you create. Once there's other businesses that have been created outside of you, so you can have a friend or someone else in your business under their profile, create a business manager account for your new business. They can then add you as a person who's got authority to be able to operate in that business. If you're thinking that this is still too confusing and you're not really sure what you've been talking about and it's all too much, by all means, please book an ASBAS one-to-one, -one, an ASBAS digital solutions one-to-one -one session with myself or there's tons of others who are really well-versed in Facebook um, and they can run through your specific circumstances. Um, there's 10,000 different versions of Facebook out there, so it's sometimes really hard to get one picture that suits everybody. As you see, I was going in and out of interfaces like I was you know, moving from room to room in a house. I'm very familiar with it, so it's not something that scares me too much, but it might scare you a little. You can book in that one-to-one. -one. Your first one uh, with that, if you haven't done one in the last two years, is, is free. Um, other than that, $44 for the second one and 66 for any after that. Um, this program does finish at the end of June this year, I believe. There's whispers that might go longer, but there's nothing confirmed. So please do use them. Use up your 24 hours of total contact time. I'd love to hear more from you. And you can just pop into businessstation.com.au to be able to do that booking. Also, if you wanna watch this again, if there's something you missed or something you'd like to go over once more, just pop into youtube.com, look for Business Station or myself. A little bit later tonight, I'll have my video in there. They'll have theirs in a little bit later today as well. Thank you so much and have a great day. It's been really fun walking through the Facebook family of apps with you. And thank you again for taking time out of your business to work on your business. Have a great weekend.